surface so I've got to put a I should say a texture and a sealant on this because I want it to last a long time and I don't want to have to be servicing it forever so the next step for me is that I um, have a little technique I call OptiStipple which is using OptiGlaze uh, a sponge tip and some polishing compounds after I've cured it to impart a stippled textured surface which is um, positive in nature and not negative and what I mean by that is that uh, when we do wax ups and the old technique was to take a brush and you stipple the surface of the wax and then when you process it you have this like bumpy surface because the bristles have penetrated the wax surface at some degree and have uh, created a texture. For me I like positive texture because one of the biggest enemies of a denture any kind of prosthetic is biofilm biofilm being that sludgy plaque that gets all over everything first and then it concretes and turns into uh, calculus so we want to try to get a surface that will not attract biofilm and thus will not create the concretions which eventually turn into plaque so or I should say calculus so with that in mind I've got to put that surface on so I've got this little brush sponge I should say I've got a brush dedicated tip for only OptiGlaze and the OptiGlaze clear OptiGlaze clear okay so I put a little bit of that out by the way you don't have to treat the surface you just put this right on top of what I just uh, did which is uh, cured this, this surface of uh, cured it in the box so what my next step is that I will take and I will brush on a coating of the clear and I don't glop it on and I don't put it on in a fashion that's gonna like run down between the tooth and the base and turn into some sort of a looks like a wet like a wet sealant I don't want that what I want is I want a surface which is semi-glossy and non-attractant to biofilm and so what I do is I first put a light coat of the OptiGlaze clear on the surface because I want to start a texturing process as I mentioned so let me just get it up here by the way you should check out the science behind OptiGlaze this is not your daddy's clear light cured varnish because it's not light cured varnish what it is is it's light cured nano composite clear resin which has well actually it has a better uh, resistance to brush strokes and wear than raw composite or acrylic alone without it on there it has more than those so if you were to put this which I do on the surface of your dentures then what you get is you got not only the surface underneath the OptiGlaze but you also have the surface that is sealed protected and strengthened yes that's right strengthened I believe it uh, science shows it and I've got cases out in the field for a year and they come back almost as glossy as the day they left the place and uh, it's just to me it's just another added benefit of using the product uh, and also providing the best in my laboratory now I'll take this foam brush you can use any foam brush this one here gives me a little more control because remember you do not want to touch the teeth with this because you do not want to texture the teeth now I show in other videos how you could paint the teeth with a rubber sep it'll add a little more time to the whole procedure but um, I know some people and in some cases I, I I tend to do that myself of course I did not do this side remember I only did this side and I so I won't put the stippling effect on here now the cool thing with the OptiGlaze is you can use just straight halogen a, a halogen box uh, works great uh, you could use the uh, 
you could use the step light which is a halogen box but it's not a very long carrying process about 40 seconds since I have a step light next to me I'm going to go ahead and flash cure this for a pre-cure just for a cycle and believe it or not just that cycle there will harden it won't smear or be tacky or anything but I will just uh, bring it back here and show you that beautiful surface now I'll go back and I'll go to directly to the amount of material on my pad and now I will do some secondary additions and again you know we could get all technical and stuff about this but I will, I, will, I will tell you this, if you look at the science of this material, you'll find that it's evenly distributed filler is what causes this to have such uh, resistance to wear and discoloration. And uh, I can show you in situ results, and I know other KOLs with GC who have tested the product can show you those same those same charts and give you the same anecdotal kind of observations I guess really where, where the rubber meets the road is you gotta try it yourself and you know what if you're not like feeling that confident about trying it on your definitive products well try it on your provisionals and see how they look after you use it I will tell you it has a ton of great usages but this stippling technique which I came up with really I just I can't say enough about the result so anyway all right I've done some more dabbing and then what I'll do is I'll take this and I will freeze it again pre-cure it I call it freezing pre-cure whatever you want to call it but I'll run it for a quick cycle under here under my step light and then I'm gonna go back and now I'm gonna go and cure this in my halogen box since I've already done two two nearly 10 second cycles what I'm going to do is now I'm going to put this in my curing box it could be a triad a pro form it could be any one of a number of halogen boxes I'm gonna cure it for about 30 seconds more why only 30 seconds because you do not want to burn this material and the way you burn this material is by over curing it if you stick this in for a minute and a minute and a minute I mean you're over curing it if you put it in for 50 seconds 50 seconds 50 seconds you're over curing it try to keep your total curing time under a minute for it totally in order to prevent it from burning and burning will show up not event not a, not initially but uh, burning will show up later uh, as it because it will yellow it'll only take a few days and it will yellow because it will be burned okay so again it's about the curing cycle this is this is already there's no tackiness or nothing I'm just gonna put it under for another 20 seconds so that I can just 20 to 30 seconds just so that I'm sure that it's totally cured through remember there are no opaque materials in the optiglaze clear so it cures easier because there's nothing blocking the curing process if this was colored optiglaze which is also a product I'm going to show you how to use the curing cycles stay the same but I'm not so concerned about burning it if I go 10 20 30 seconds over because it's it takes a little bit longer to cure through because of the fact that there are colorants in it that cause it to be opaque which block the curing action to a certain degree alright so I'll be back I'm gonna run this and I'll come back and show you the next step Okay, so I've run the I've run the denture with the optostipple sponging technique that I came up with on the surface, and now I have to find a way to take a the gloss off and b to create more texture than bumps. And these are positive bumps, but they're still bumps nonetheless. And I want to take them down a little bit. So what I do is I will take some polishing compound. Uh, it doesn't matter whose it is as long as it's liquidous and it's not harsh you you don't want to like you don't want to try to buzz off what we've already accomplished but what you want to do is just uh, knock down the surface I use this stuff it's uh, from Renfert it's called Resolute I've been using it for years um, but I'll show you that what you do with this material and it isn't that you put a whole lot on you put just enough 
to um, fog the surface, okay? Fog the surface. I'm going to try to stay off the teeth as much as possible because I want to show you something else. But anyways, that would be about that'd be about what you want. Then what you do is there's these groovy little goat hair star brushes that I use right here. If you've seen these before, they're great. Um, what I do with these is on slow speed, about 6,000 RPMs, is that I take and I go this way against the papillas and the rest of the surface, circular motion. And what I'm doing is I am polishing and knocking down at the same time anything that might be a little too strong in the, in the positive stippling arena area and I'll just continue to work this area go slow don't go hard go slow and light let the polishing compound take down the glaze work that for a little bit usually you can usually tell in about a half a minute to a minute you'll have done that sufficiently then what I do is I come back with a goat hair with a chamois in the center. There's a chamois center. Again, about 3,000, uh, I'm sorry, about 6,000 RPMs. And what I do is I hit any of the surfaces that are broad and flat with it. I even go around this area a little bit. Then I go into the palette, and I use this for my palette to do the same thing, to polish my palette. And then once I've done that, then I come back final with this little rascal, which is just a muslin buff mounted on my handpiece. And I... Uh, same way, attack it from the papillas out, and I, with nothing on this, this is dry as a bone, okay? This is just to bring it up, and if you do it that way, you'll get a really cool result. So, star brush, goat hair star brush, not the stiff, by the way, get the soft. Goat hair brush, soft with the chamois center, and then this little rascal here, just a muslin buff. All for the handpiece. Okay, you could do it on a lathe, but, you know, I use the handpiece. That's just the way I do it. All right, so I'm going to go, I'm going to do this, and then I'll come back. We'll take a couple pictures so you can see what the surface looks like, okay? All right.